In this episode, we'll talk about how to make your sound louder and consistent from video to video. Why might you want to make your sound louder? Well, we talked in the last episode, which you can see over here, about how to set the gain or the input level on your audio recording so that when the talent are talking or person's talking, if they suddenly get very loud or laugh or something of that nature, you need to leave yourself some headroom, some space for that louder volume from your talent. If you don't, you can end up with distortion and clipping. So you need to leave a little bit of headroom. But the problem is, is once you download that to your computer and you're editing your video, sometimes it seems like it's not quite loud enough. And in fact, that's the case. So to fix that, we can do what's called loudness normalization. Now, I used to think that you could just normalize the audio. What normalize means is you just bring the level of everything up until the peaks come close to the top, which is zero dB. But the problem with that is that the peaks are always a different amplitude or different height. And if you just bring them up, your, your sound is gonna be inconsistent from one video to the next. And the peaks might get in the way so that the sound overall isn't loud enough because our ears don't really hear the peaks so much. They perceive loudness when there's a sustained high amplitude. So what do you do? Well, that's where loudness normalization comes in. First of all, how do we measure loudness? Loudness is now generally measured using loudness units full scale, which is sometimes abbreviated to LUFS. If you can loudness normalize your audio to the same LUFS level every time from video to video, you can get very consistent results, which is really good for your audience. So they don't have to be cranking their volume up and down depending on which one they're listening to. So when you record your audio and you download it to your computer, it might sound something like this. Well, when I was young, my background of working with my hands, um, I remember we moved to Arkansas. But after we loudness normalize it, it'll sound something more like this. Well, when I was young, my background of working with my hands, um, I remember we moved to Arkansas. So let's talk a little bit about three different ways you can loudness normalize your audio. The first two we'll go into a little bit of detail. The third one is a lot more involved, so we'll actually just have a link to that one if you wanna do that. That's the manual method. Let's take a look. The first way to loudness normalize the audio for your video is to use your video editing application. Now, in Premiere Pro, this is Premiere Pro 2017 CC. What I would normally do is go ahead and edit my video. Once I'm done with that, I would just export it as usual by coming up to File, Export Media. Once I come to the Export dialog here, um, I'd go ahead and set, set everything up just like I would normally to export the video, but I'll also come over here to my Effects tab. And on the Effects tab, I'll scroll down to the bottom until I come to the checkbox for Loudness Normalization. Check that. I would change this to ITU BS 1770-3. Since we are going to be publishing this to the web or for viewing on mobile devices, normally the recommendation is to go to minus 16 LUFS for a stereo video. If you're going to go to a television station, this will need to change a little bit. So for example, if you're in Europe, you'd use the EBU R128 standard. If you're coming to, um, again, for the United States and some other countries, you'll use this standard and you'll set this for your country. So for example, for United States, it's minus 24 LUFS. But again, because we're going to web, minus 16. We'll leave this as is, and we'll change the max true peak level to minus one. Then just go ahead and export as usual. Now, if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 editor like I am, this is my editor of choice. I actually use Premiere and Final Cut Pro 10. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro 10 does not have a loudness normalization module. Um, they do have, so for example, if you select this clip down here and come up to the little speaker icon in the inspector, you can see here, for example, if you do the audio analysis, there is this loudness module right here. Unfortunately, though, it's just some percentages to set the amount and uniformity, which makes it so that you don't necessarily get consistent results from video to video, and it's not loudness normalizing to any sort of standard. So Unfortunately, I don't end up using this a whole lot. It, it works pretty nicely, but you don't know what you're getting in the end. <laughs> so normally I'll show you another method that I would use instead of this. Another method you could use is a service on the web called Auphonic. What Auphonic does is you upload your video file or your audio file, set a couple of settings, it processes the audio, and then allows you to download the loudness normalized audio or the video if you uploaded a video file. This is really awesome. It automates the process. Now you do have to upload the file, so there's a little bit of work there, but it does a really, really nice job. And in fact, it does more than Adobe Premiere Pro does. So let me show you here. If you are going to start a new audio file, you just click on new production here. I actually have one set up that we'll show you here. You can set presets. So if you're going to do this often, 
you have a, a way to simplify the process of getting things set up. First of all, I upload my file. You can also get a file from Dropbox or you can use HTTP. In any case, I just select a file here, which is in my case, an audio file, a WAV file. You can again also upload a video file. We're gonna skip some of this other stuff because it's not relevant to what we're talking about here, but you're certainly encouraged to go and explore these other features as well. But then we come down here to output files. And since I have an audio file and I'm going to take it back into my video editor, I choose WAVE 16-bit PCM. Now, if you uploaded a video file, you might instead want to choose video, same format as input. What this does is it keeps your video in the same format. It just does the audio processing and loudness normalization, and then allows you to download a new copy of the video file that has the audio all ready to go. For my audio file, I'll just choose the defaults here for bitrate, optimal, and ending in WAV. I give this a name here. So for example, let's just change this to sample normalized to minus 16 LUFS. And then we come down here to the audio algorithms section. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> now, one of the problems with Premiere Pro's method of doing loudness normalization is that if you have some peaks where your amplitude peaks up and then falls back down again really quickly, or you have a period where someone got really loud, maybe laughed or something of that nature, and was much, much louder than the rest of the audio, what happens in Premiere Pro is that when it does the loudness normalization and it makes sure that you don't clip using that limiter, what can happen sometimes is you can get some odd sounding artifacts. So it works under most circumstances, but sometimes you're gonna get some strangeness. That's where Auphonic is a little bit better. It actually does this adaptive leveling here. So if you do have any of those issues where suddenly someone got very loud, it'll actually compress that a little bit so you retain the quality of the audio before you loudness normalize it. Then of course there's the loudness normalization. And again, if you're producing something for the web or for mobile devices, normally I would recommend minus 16 LUFS. If you have a mono file for some reason, you can do minus 19 LUFS perceptually to our ears, that's the same on a mono file as minus 16 LUFS is on a stereo file. So that's gonna be used less commonly, but for maybe some podcasts, for example, if you're going to produce it in mono, you could choose that option. Of course, if you're going to television in Europe, you choose minus 23 or television in the United States, minus 24. We're going to web, so we're gonna keep it there. I keep filtering checked. This is just essentially a high pass filter, so it gets rid of any really low frequency humming noises that you don't need. And then of course, if you do wanna do some noise reduction, that's an option here as well. And in fact, Auphonic does a very, very nice job at noise and hum reduction. So if for example, I wanted to do that, I might check here. And I would normally start with a six decibel noise reduction. If you go more aggressive than that, things can start to sound a little funny, <laughs> um, but definitely start with that. And you'll also get a chance to listen to your audio before you download it. So don't worry if you don't feel like you don't know exactly what you should set it at. I would normally start with 6 dB and then take it from there. Then we click Start Production, and Auphonic has processed it that quickly. If it takes a little longer sometimes, if there's a lot of processing going on from other people as well, it may just give you a message here saying, hey, we're waiting, and it will notify you when it's ready to go via email. When it's ready, you can go ahead and play through it here, and if it sounds great, then you can go ahead and download it. But if it doesn't sound exactly like you wanted it to, you can go back in and edit this production by clicking that link, change some of the settings and process it again. So pretty slick service. Now, how much does this cost? That's the first question that I think a lot of people ask. Well, for, uh, for free, you can get two hours of audio processed per month. And for most of us, that's gonna be sufficient. If you're gonna do more than that, you do have to buy some credits. So for example, if you wanted to do nine hours a month, that's $11 US, nine euro, um, which is fairly reasonable from my point of view. Also, there's an option to do it with a desktop app. If you wanted to process a whole lot of audio without having to upload it every time, and you're gonna do long, you know, clips of audio plus a whole bunch of clips of audio, and you wanna batch process it, the desktop app may be a better choice here. And if you come to this here, for example, if you want to download this app, it does the exact same thing the online version does, but without having to upload the files. If you just need a personal license, it's 69 euro or $89 US, or if you need a commercial license, 299 euro, $349 US. I really like Auphonic. It does a very, very nice job. The audio sounds great coming out of it and highly recommended. Now, the third method is the manual method. This is the method where you actually go in and do each of the individual steps. If you're gonna do noise reduction, you do that. Um, you could do some compression to or leveling to bring the peaks down a little bit, and then you normalize the entire thing up to a standard audio level. 
So that's a good thing to understand. Here's a link on how to do that. So there is loudness normalization. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.